In this lecture, we're going to look at the in-app browser plugin within our Ionic project. So we can start off by installing the Cordova plugin by saying Ionic Cordova plugin add Cordova plugin in-app browser. After that, we can install the Ionic native plugin by saying npm install at Ionic native slash in-app browser. Do be aware of the different spellings of in-app browser. One has dashes and the other one doesn't when it comes to installing the plugins. This plugin is widely supported. It supports the following platforms, Amazon Fire OS, Android, Blackberry, Browser, Firefox OS, iOS, and much more. So now that we've got everything under control, we've downloaded the plugins and investigated the platforms, let's open this up inside of our editor. So the first thing to do, and this is the same for all Ionic native plugins, is import it into our root app module. So let's import in-app browser from Ionic native. We can then add this to the list of providers. And after that, we can head over to our component. So I'll be using the homepage component. And as always, we'll be injecting that into the constructor. So let's say private in-app browser. And that is of type in-app browser. And remember, we can import that from Ionic Native as well. So everything so far has been a standard setup for Ionic Native. And now we'll get to the in-app browser specifics. So for this project, I'm going to head over to home.html. And I'm going to change the title to be in-app browser. I'll also change the color of the navbar to be dark. And I'll start off by adding an ion item. Now the ion item will allow us to hold a label. That label will be floating and will contain the value of URL. This will allow the user to submit a URL in which they can submit into an ion input. The ion input will have a type of URL that gives us some keyboard specific things. And I'll also attach an ng model equal to a class variable named URL. Finally, we'll create ourselves a button. And that button will have the ion button attribute. I'm going to give it the block attribute. And I'm also going to give it the clear attribute. That should make it take up 100% width and, of course, be clear. We'll give it a click event of open web page. And then of course, we'll pass in a URL to this function. So the text for our button will be open web page. Simple enough. So we can head over to our home.ts, our home page, and we can make our URL of type string, and then our function open web page, which takes a URL of type string. We don't have to add this as a parameter here but it makes it more testable and more flexible. So the first thing to do is say this.inappbrowser.create. And you'll notice that this returns us an in-app browser object. As a result, we can say const browser is equal to creating this browser. So by creating the browser, we also need to pass through a URL. And that URL comes from our parameter and then we have two optional parameters. The first is a target. Now that's the target in which to load the URL. By default, the target is self, but we can use blank to simply open it inside of the in-app browser or system to open this inside of the system browser. I'm gonna leave this at self to simply open it inside of the Cordova web view. We also have the ability to add some in-app browser options. Let's import in-app browser options from Ionic Native, and we can make ourselves some options by saying const options of type in-app browser options. And if you wish, you can of course add some options. 
Everything from allowing a location bar on or off to clearing the cache, session cache, using the hardware back button, and much more. If we were to, for example, turn off the Android zoom controls, we could do that by saying zoom, and then of course putting the value to no. Let's pass these options in to our in-app browser. So essentially, we're opening a URL and returning an in-app browser object. Now, why is it important that we know that it's an in-app browser object? Well, that's because we can now say browser dot, and we have the ability to do everything from closing the browser, showing the browser, hiding it, and of course, executing scripts and inserting CSS. Finally, with the on method, we can hook into a particular browser event and then use subscribe to subscribe to this event. For now, let's go back to simply opening up a URL. If we run this on our device by saying Ionic Cordova run Android, and I'm gonna add the dash L flag for live reload, we should be able to go ahead and open up a URL inside of our application. So I'm gonna add my blog so that's blog.paulhalliday.io. And if I click open web page, you can now see that our website opens up inside of our application. If I select a page, I can go through and browse as normal. If I want to, I can select a different page with the URL bar up top. And also I can hit the X to return to the app. So that's how we can use the in-app browser to navigate to different websites from inside of our application.